Hello Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. Let's use some water in a bucket on a rope to demonstrate the difference between real physics and the pseudoscience that has us believe we are on a spinning ball Earth in a heliocentric system that has been uh, created by borrowing pieces of real physics and then making assumptions and calculations to create a model. Uh, we've all seen this experiment where we spin the bucket and the water stays in the bucket. All right. Uh, we've got the water which is a mass of a specific weight and uh, it stays in the bucket because we are essentially creating gravity that is going outwards from the center. You can call this centrifugal force if you want, but what we are doing is making down continue to be towards the bottom of the bucket, even though we are spinning it. So we can talk about frames of reference in this respect, if you like. Uh, but we have a, a mass or a weight that we can know. We have um, a distance between the center point and the bucket that we can know. And we have a rate of rotation which we can measure basically the time taken for this to rotate. So if we know one or two of these variables, the time taken for the bucket to spin, the weight or the distance between the center point and the bucket, we can use any one of those to make calculations and assumptions about the objects we see in the sky or the assumption that the Earth is um, doing the same thing spinning around the sun and of course it can all appear to work if you start off with a specific number uh, namely the mass or the time taken to uh, see an object go past yeah it's all real physics and real mathematics but that does not make it our physical reality so of course when we are spinning this we have um, a certain time that the uh, bucket is making an orbit and we have a certain mass in the bucket and we have a string and of course um, there is no string going from the sun to the earth or the other planets uh, but uh, gravity is said to replace this string but the main problem we have um, is that when we have a globe like this we are then told to assume that uh, uh, the gravity is going the opposite way to what it was just now. Just now we had gravity going outwards from the center, but now on the Earth we have gravity going inwards towards the center from the outside. So we had to make the assumption that uh, it is the Earth's mass that is creating the gravity in order to have us stick to the ball. Of course, a sphere is used in these calculations because it is. Um, and you can get nice round numbers from it. Yeah, you can uh, assume a mass, and then you can play with those figures. And we have uh, the famous uh, 9.8 meters per second per second if something is dropped through the medium of air. And of course, a solid object cannot be supported by the air. It also has to be lifted up before it can be dropped. Okay, but uh, the rate at which this ball will head towards the ground has nothing whatsoever to do with the mass of the Earth beneath it, which is what we have to assume in the heliocentric globe Earth model. Um, it is simply a direct relationship between the medium of air and uh, the fact that this is something that the air cannot support. Yeah? So it's really simple. There is a difference between uh, the real physics that we can do and observe to create gravity as an outward force but when it comes to making gravity become an inward force towards the center of the globe so that we can stick to it this is pu purely an assumption but a necessary one in the model because they had to have a mass just like this bucket is a mass attached to a string in order to keep it in place as it uh, does in orbit around the the center point. They had to assume that the Earth and the other planets have specific masses. And then, of course, they had to make the assumption that the Sun is massive uh, enough to create enough gravity to hold all the planets in its orbit. Uh, these are all assumptions. They are unknowns. But, of course, we can make predictions because of the amount of time it takes something to travel across the sky. 
So really all we are talking about is time, telling the time. When you look at the stars, the sun, the moon, uh, we are telling the time. And then they are creating the model based on um, the real physics of knowing masses and distances uh, and the rates of rotation uh, to create a mathematical model that simply does not fit our reality, even though it appears on the surface to work. Thank you very much.